In this video, I'll share two MATLAB implementations of the bisection method for root finding. Just as a one-sentence review, the bisection method works by continuously halving the interval containing the root until you close in on the answer. Here's a function m file I've written to implement the bisection method. It's called bisection underscored xtol because it uses the percent relative error to determine when to stop iterating. I have another function called bisection underscored ftol, which uses a tolerance based on the function evaluated at the root. We'll get into that one a little bit later. Anyways, this function takes five inputs. An anonymous function representing the equation you're solving, the initial lower guess, the initial upper guess, your desired stopping criterion, and the maximum number of iterations. Supplying a desired maximum number of iterations prevents things like excessive computation times. For instance, let's say the percent relative error is really small, but still above the stopping criterion. If the percent relative error doesn't change much in successive iterations, it might just be better to let the algorithm terminate after a certain number of iterations rather than continuing until the error is met. The function returns four outputs, the root estimate, the value of the function evaluated at the root estimate, the final percent relative error, and the number of iterations it took. The first part of the function does some preliminary checks to see if you called the function correctly. The Nargan keyword checks how many inputs were provided to the function. If you call the function with less than three inputs, it will return an error. You can leave the es and or maxit inputs blank when you call the function. If so, these lines assign default values to es and or maxit. The last check makes sure you provided valid initial guesses. Remember that the signs of f of xl and f of xu must be different. This is necessary in order to guarantee a root exists within the interval xl to xu. Now let's get to the meat of the function. The iteration occurs within this while loop. In each iteration, we store the previous value of xr in the xr old variable. Then we compute the current iterations xr. We compute the percent relative error, then we determine the xl and the xu for the next iteration based on the signs of xl and xr. If the test variable returns a negative value, that means f of xl and f of xr have opposite signs, so the root lies somewhere within the subinterval from xl to xr, and xr becomes xu in the next iteration. If not, that means the root lies in the subinterval between xr and xu, so xr becomes xl in the next iteration. This if statement determines whether or not to break the while loop. The loop is broken if we fall under the error tolerance, or if we hit the max number of iterations. Once the while loop breaks, the function returns the current root estimate and the value of the function when evaluated at the root estimate. Here's the other function m file I mentioned. It's very similar to the one I just showed you, but this function uses a tolerance in y instead of a tolerance in x. In other words, this one checks if f of xr is sufficiently close to zero after every iteration instead of checking if the percent relative error is small. The code is pretty similar. There are only slight differences. For example, this if statement uses a differently written condition, but it actually does the same thing as the other function. I did this because I want to hammer home the point that there are multiple ways to program the same result. On that same note, you can write your own bisection function if you want to. Some of you might think it's more logical to replace the while loop with a for loop ranging from 1 to max it, and that's also a perfectly valid approach. Some of you might also enjoy having one function m file which can account for either a tolerance in x or y, but my personal preference is to have a separate function m file for each stopping criterion. Regardless of whether you use my code straight up, you modify them to your liking, or you write your own, you should keep these as a standalone function m file since you'll probably reuse them a lot during this unit. If you put them in your working directory, you can call the functions directly from a script file without needing to copy and paste the code at the end of the script. Here's a short test case I wrote to illustrate the usage of these two functions. We want to find the root of the function ln of x squared minus 0.7. I chose an initial lower guess of 0.5 and an initial upper guess of 2. You can verify that these are valid initial guesses by plugging them into the function f of xl and f of xu have different signs, so we know that the root lies somewhere in between xl and xu. I set a stopping criterion of 1e-3 and did not choose to set the maximum number of iterations. The rest of this section plots the function. In the second section, I call the two bisection method functions and use some fprintf statements to neatly print the results to the command window. 
In the last few lines of the script, I plot the results on a separate subplot. Based on the command window output, we can see that both functions more or less obtain the same result. In the first function, the final percent relative error is 0.0008%, which satisfies the 0.001% tolerance we supplied. It converged to this answer in 17 iterations. In the second function, we see that f of xr was obtained within the tolerance in 10 iterations. On the plot, we can see that the first method appears to be more accurate than the second method, but keep in mind that this is because I used the same stopping criterion for both functions. You can easily make the results from one function more or less accurate than the other function by giving each function its own ES value. Either way, the similarity of the results with respect to the true value of the root verifies their correctness. You can download both of these functions and this script file in the video description. Feel free to reuse these functions in your own codes or make any modifications to the functions you deem necessary. See you next time.